that coffee shit. That's for old niggas. <laughs> Look, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm drinking this shit. That's why I'm drinking this shit. That's me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's me. What's happening? It's your boy, that motherfucker Steve from MCTV, and we are on MCTV, the podcast coming at you from Kansas City this week, and we got. I mean, no introduction needed. We got the homie gotta miss up in this motherfucker tonight. Jason yeah. Dean, Jason Hasselhoff, if you nasty. <laughs> and of course, this is your boy Big Ray West, B-I-Double-G, representing the west side of Des Moines, not to be confused with the coast, you did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, we might as well get right into it. We got, uh, I mean, I'm I'm looking extra crispy with this here Chiefs hat. Yeah, sure. uh, You guys are looking go. real good. Oh, my bad, my bad, Ray. Yeah, he's a Cowboys fan. He's a Cowboys <laughs> fan. Oh, <man. laughs> They they had a solid season too though you know what I mean I'm not even real strong with the sports but I'm just I figured we in Kansas City we might as well kick this one off see what I did there a little football <laughs> humor uh, man you don't even watch right but but see the irony in that joke was that uh, prior to killing it last week your man Butker was not really kicking it off to <laughs> himself he got, got his shit together, together bars, bars. Got his shit together, uh, what's, what's up bro good, good to see you man how you likewise, been likewise man I'm, I'm chilling man I'm chilling. Chillin'. I'm uh, I'm maintaining, maintaining, trying to put it together. Uh, you know, just watching the world from a from a bird's eye view, if you will. Uh, watching the United States and its controlled demolition, as it were. So yeah, man, uh, it's it's never a dull moment. I try to let people know all the time for all your Netflix and and, and all the made em ups, like to call them made em ups. For all the made em ups you like to watch, the greatest show on earth is going down. Right in front of you all the time. Just tune in. It's never any season so long as you live. And so hello. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like, like that. that. Yeah, man. I like that. Um, all right, so uh, let's just kind of kick it off real quick. Uh, I did it again. I said to kick off shit, but uh, we're going into it. Uh, so, well, all right. So you was on Strange Music for a good minute. What years did you sign to Strange? I uh, signed in 2013, and then. Uh, you know, was on for, did a bid for four years after the fact. Nice. Yeah. Who was on Strange when you signed to it? Uh, let's see. In my class, I think you had Ritz and Mayday, myself and Yubi. Uh, I think I think that I think that was it. I think that was okay. And Cuddy awesome. Cuddy was still on there. Yeah, Brian, yeah, he Chris. was still on at the time. Okay, dope. How do you, so? I don't know if I've ever actually heard the story. I mean, we've talked several times, but I don't know if I ever actually heard the story. How did you guys actually end up? You know, doing the whole signing and everything. Was that something where you guys solicited them or did they come to you? Uh that you know, interesting story. Um we were we were opening for Dev and the Dude. Nice. At a joint called the Riot Room. And uh Tech was fresh off tour and he had just saw us there. He had just saw us there and that's really when the talks started. There was no talks prior prior to that. Never shopping any demos to them or anything like that. So he got at, he got at you basically off the strength of your show of the performance yeah, there yeah, there you go yeah so that yeah so that was gnarly uh uh yeah man and then people don't really know that they, we, we were in talks for at least a couple years after the fact a lot of people thought we were signed already but we were just really uh lawyering up and trying to see what was what so it took a couple years for the for the ink to actually dry but yeah then it did so that's dope so it was like the first talks immediately of like Signing or was it like collaborating? Going like, what was the 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 first talks like? You know, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. A few collaborations uh, came up in the wake of while you know while the lawyers were talking. That's a awesome. few collaborations happened. Uh, you want to talk about some of those? Like, how did those happen? Were y'all at his studio, y'all studio via email? Oh, uh, we used to meet up at a place called Chapman. Yes. That's where that's where the majority of Strangers' recordings went down prior okay. to prior to Strangeland existing. Yeah. And uh, I think I think the first feature we did for Tech was on all sixes and sevens. I think. Yeah. Yo, With, talk uh, about the, talk about that high a little bit off of that song. You know what? No, nah, you know what? Actually, the actually the first one was uh, "Living Like I'm Dying." Okay. Off this off this mixtape he did, and I remember getting that Tech, and I asked him to do something more aggressive after that, and then that's when we got on all sixes and seven. So uh I mean yeah man yeah you know it was it was uh it's a weird nobody saw it coming you know what I'm saying so it was a little it was a little shock to the system but uh we rolled the wave at that point 
did did life instantly change? I mean, was it like overnight? Like, you know, it, you know, it's funny. Ironically enough, uh, life never actually changed in Kansas City. You know, what I'm saying we were never heralded as like some kind of uh, hometown favorite or something. So, you know, and in retrospect, if that was a good thing, because I could always walk around and just be, yeah, and just be real, real regular. Sure. You know just move around real regular, like prior to the signing. Uh, but then in contrast, outside of Kansas City, when you go to places like Denver and places like this, then it's like, you, you know, it's like low key famous out there. It's really weird. And people always assumed it was like that at home. They're like, what's it like being signed to strange and being from Kansas City? I'm like, it's pretty regular. It's pretty regular. <laughs> Which again, in retrospect, turned out to be a good thing. That yeah, kind of kept you grounded a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Able to navigate, just have a regular life. For sure. For sure. Man, uh, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Ubi, man. How did y'all meet? And y'all been rocking? And you know I'm saying, give us a little bit of history on y'all. Oh, Cess crew man. and shit. That's a, you know, it's a it's a long story to rehash, especially at <laughs> especially at this point. It's a long story you. to rehash, but uh, he's a transplant. You know, what I'm saying he was from. Uh, Colorado and uh, uh, came down initially to visit some homies and uh, me and him in the midst of that ended up uh, you know just just chopping it up ended up writing a lot of raps smoke a whole lot of weed yeah, sir. play a whole lot of video games <laughs> that's what's up which turned into doing a whole lot of shows <laughs> which turned into putting out music uh, and at the time this is before everybody had to play book you still had to you still had to, you know, send off to disc makers and, oh, and, yeah. and, and cop the fit and cop the fifteen hundred pack right. and try to move those. And so uh that's how we did it. And uh at the time I think that's what really set us apart from what cats were doing. You know, it, you know the air when everybody was burning a CD, you take the Sharpie, you scribble oh, yep. on the C D, you scribble oh, your number silver, on there. Silver joints. For sure, for <laughs> sure. Which is, you know, you gotta respect that move, but uh uh, we 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 took it a step further than that. And was really looking at the independent labels around us that were not not necessarily around us, but that were prominent at the time, like uh, Rhyme Sayers and Def Jux and labels like these, and uh, kind of took their model, kind of took their model. That's how we knew to just save our chips up and save up to get the product back with the barcode and the shrink wrap, nice like this, and uh, you know, try to move those out of Seventh Heaven and. Um, you know, Penny Lane and other other local mom and pop stores that were around at the time. And that was the grind. And I think uh, I think that's what set us apart from stuff, too. And, uh, yeah, so. That shit really paid off, too. You know what I mean? Like, investing in your own craft. It, it paid off. But, you know, in, in, in retrospect, in retrospect, the hack would have been, the hack would have been to order locally in a smaller bulk. And then as those, you know, and as those go out and the demand goes up, then you just re-up. That would have been the play. To buy, in retrospect, buying 1,500 CDs, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After you move about 300 of them and then hand out another 50 of them and then the rest of them sit and, and collect dust. So, uh, you know what I mean? You call the move. 1,500 CDs is a lot to move. That's a lot. Especially the, hand to hand. Yeah, man, for sure. For sure. So what's the state of Cess crew today? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Uh, sitting on a lot of, sitting on a lot of tracks, sitting on a couple tracks. Oh, I didn't even know. Okay, that's what's up. Oh uh, yeah, but they, yeah, but they like two, three years old. That's you still know, new to everybody else. They're still new to everybody else, and I don't know if those will see the light of day, or how, or how any of that's gonna work out. But uh, it's yeah, it's hard to say. You know, I got one foot in, one foot out the music thing. I'm just kind of, mm. I'm just kind of yeah, bobbing back and forth with it. Um. You know, I always said when it wasn't fun anymore that I'd probably be done doing it. Uh, parts of it are fun, parts of it are not. I don't ever think I don't ever think I'll stop writing or stop making music. Um, I got a lot of I got a lot of projects out there with with uh, not a lot invested in them. Yeah. At this point, but as far as that crew, man, who knows? That's what's up. Yeah, who knows? Uh. Now, in the past, you and I have talked, and um, you've talked about, you know, different avenues. You've always been kind of a uh, artistic dude and, and stuff like that. Is For that sure. something? Because uh, I know at one point you and I had discussed uh, maybe even selling some of your art projects. Are you still working on uh, different art forms and stuff like that? Uh, yeah. Any, you know, um, the illustrations for me is is a lot like the writing. Uh, they kind of fuel each other. So yeah, man, I still uh, I still do a lot of drawings. Um, I'm still drawing a whole lot. Um, yeah, and we'll see. And we'll see. I always, always said I didn't want to sell anything unless, uh, 
unless I could really stand behind that. Uh, I get offered a lot of uh, commissions for work and shit like that, but I just really be drawing for myself a lot. I think uh, I think the play would be to amass some of these sketchbooks and some of these sketches and just, uh, you know, make like a tapestry of them, if you will. Oh, dope. And just see, just see what goes for what. Something high end, not so, uh, not so hip hop based. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The, the art, the art really don't reflect the hip hop like, like that. that. It's, it's more, more uh, derivative of like oil paint, paint type, type shit. shit. Okay. I don't, I don't know if any of it's any good, but we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. see. That's what's up. Um, so, so what's the next play for Godness? I mean, we we talked, talked about this a couple different times, but you know what I mean. You know, I don't want to speak too much on this EP because I've just gotten the portion from the person that they want me on, and uh, I mean that can happen. If there was any, if there's anybody that could get me to do it, it's this dude. Uh, and again, I don't want to put him out there because because I I don't know what my name attached to him is going to do for him. Okay. So I don't want to put him out there. But uh been very aggressively getting at me and throwing me throwing me shit and like, yo, that's your part. That's your part, go right there. Um but but, but he's a but he's a but he's a uh, I'll say this, he's a strange he's formerly a strange artist as well. Oh yo. I'll say that much. Okay. okay. And, that's exciting. Yeah, and, and for the fans. Yeah, sure. and he's a local guy. That's what's up. There right. we go. There we go. Right. Drop yourself in the comments and let us know who <laughs> that might be. You know what I mean? We know exactly who it is. <laughs> we already know who it is. <laughs> yeah, I want to see what your guess is. Right. Hey, that's uh, dope, man. All right. Go ahead. What you no, say? no. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Hey, so being a local rapper, you know what I'm saying? What advice do you have to locals coming up in KC? You know what I'm saying? That have the strange music dream, you know what I'm saying? That grind. What advice would you have for them? Good question. I like that. Well... Okay, it's an interesting answer. This is what I'd say. Um, I would say the world may have too many, if not certainly enough rappers. Um, I would challenge someone with a with a with a dream to be a quote unquote rapper to uh, challenge yourself and probably see what else, probably see what else you into. Um, I, w- I would advise a rapper in the climate of the game right now uh, to probably just leave that alone. You could probably you could probably find a, you could probably find a better way to spend your time <laughs> if you got if you got the kind of uh, if you built for this shit and you have a vision. That vision would probably be manifested better with a different tool set, is what I would say. But here's but here's the here's the here's the glitch in that advice I just gave you. For if that if that impacts anybody who wants to do this music shit, if they just heard what I said and and they actually take that to heart, then you're already not supposed to be doing this shit. What I what, how you're supposed to feel to what I just said Talk is fuck with that eat. fuck with that dude saying Talk I'm doing him. this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that's how that's supposed to work. If I if I could convince you possibly not to, then maybe you shouldn't. You see what I'm saying? You gotta, like you got to be determined. You got to be. Yeah, game. it's not supposed to matter what I'm saying. Advice is for advice is for I'm, for not. Right. Advice is for not. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to rapping. Especially when it comes to rapping. Fuck fuck the advice, man. Just go. Yeah. yeah it's kind of yeah, like yeah. a cliff. You either got to jump off it or you can't stand there and debate. Bro, the shit, the shit really does pick you. I was uh I was contemplating that shit the other day. I'm like uh looking back at it, I'm like, "Damn, how would I see the vision?" Like you, you know, like hindsight's 2020. 20. So you so you you do your tours and you put your albums out and you write your verses and then looking back, you're like, "Damn, I couldn't even see how I was doing it the whole time because you was just going. I was just because you just go. I was just gonna ask because you're so caught up in the moment and everything is in the now, and then you reflect back on things and you kind of go, damn, damn, how'd I even do that shit? Right, because you was just going, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it seems like there'd be a vision or some sort of advice or a playbook, and 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 some people are wired like that. I think I just I think I just like you said landed on the the weird artsy side of it you know what i mean i'm always gonna buck the system and not to be i'm not i'm not gonna go about it in a regular way so and then another question um you being signed have you have you only been signed to strange music or have you been signed to multiple labels throughout your career you know inter- interesting interesting question uh well, i was signed as my junior year in high school i think i signed to a local label called no coast records and we were on there with another act called Devious Minds. Is this you and Yubi? Yeah. Okay. 
Devious Minds and who else was on there? Oh, no, 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 no. This wasn't even, no, this ain't even me and you be on no coast. It was me and my friend Jamal and my homie Michael Kennedy. And our group's name was Kwai Low. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, so. it's really weird. Yeah, 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 it's weird. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's the only other label I was signed to, though. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> with being signed to a label and stuff, a lot of people think that when you sign a record deal, you're rich. You're, you're, the money is automatically there. Is that true? Can you elaborate on the, how the money works with record labels, you know? Well, in my situation, yes, sir. that's not how it happened. I was signed to what you would call a 360 deal, if we're not for, if we're not familiar. If you're not familiar, take out your smartphone, Google it right. or whatever. Um, so yeah, I was getting signed in three six. I was signed into a three sixty deal, so there was no sort of major advance or anything like that. I made the majority of my money touring, which is very good money, and then uh, not so good money through album sales and everything else. But um, but I can't I can't speak. You know, the climate the three sixty deal was outdated by the time I inked it. Um, and all contracts are predatory in nature, so there's that. But uh. Yeah, so no, that's not how it worked for me. Um, yep, that's what I have to say about that. Because because you see this nigga, the rap money today is way different from 2013. Okay. You know, the rap money today is way different from that. So guys are inking other deals. I think uh, the majority of artists are smart enough to know that a 360 deal is not something you want to sign. Um, so yeah, there that is. So who okay now uh jumping up a little more contemporary uh who are you, are we jumping around a little bit but we we got you in the hot seat you know we're catching all these questions right now uh if if we uh if who you fucking with out of Kansas City right now like who who is hot who are you vibing to man I don't you know what I don't vibe <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, I mean, That's me, deep, yeah, me, me and hip, me and hip hop, yeah, I'd be glad to. <laughs> me and hip hop have a have a very strange relationship in the way that uh, I think I think uh, it's gonna sound bad, but hear me out, don't hold me. It's gonna sound bad. I think I outgrew this shit. Okay. I think, I think when I look at the culture and the effect that it's had on society. If I'm being honest with myself, I think it's done more hurt than than it has good. I think I think anyone who's being honest with themselves, and if you know how music and mantras work, and 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 and, and the universe and energy, if you know how these things work, if you're being honest with yourself, uh, I think you'd have to admit that the culture admits an abundance of negative connotations to. What the fuck's going on in the world? We kind of talked about some of that on previous podcasts. Too. Word. Yep. And I and not and and again, not all of it. Not not all yeah. of it. But uh, I think overwhelmingly, and, and 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 myself guilty of it too. I think you can do bad in a lot of different ways. Oh yeah. And and promote bad things oh, yeah. in a lot of in a lot of different ways, and and sometimes unknowingly, sometimes knowingly. Um. So I don't know what was the question. Who's hot in KC right now? Oh, and I don't vibe. Oh, so I say that to say, so I say all that to say, even 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 the music I do fuck with today, like the songs I like, I have to listen to it like a, I have to listen to it like a, uh, how can I explain it? It's like taking a medicine you don't like or something, you just swallow the shit. You know what I'm saying? I could listen to, I could listen to Migos or whatever it is for so long, but then if I key in, and it's hard for me not to tune in to what's actually being said. I can't just listen to songs passively, yeah. but I have to try to. Otherwise, I'm going to start hating that shit. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, I'll be listening to songs, and then as soon as I start tuning in to what it's saying, I'm like, ugh, this shit's really bad. You know what I'm saying? This shit's really bad. This shit's really horrible, you know? And uh, so, so... so uh, so, so with, with that, that being said, said I, don't, I don't listen to any, I don't, I don't listen to any, not, not only do I not listen to very much hip hop, but definitely nothing local. Okay. okay. Nothing, like nothing at all. So, so if you pull out your phone right now, who, who are you? I don't, I don't have a phone. phone. Oh, I, okay. That was a bad example. But I haven't had, had a smartphone phone for like three, four years. Yeah, don't have one. My fault, my fault. All right. But if we queued up a playlist for God, who's on it then? 
Who's, who's, if, if, if you were like, you know what, I just want to kick back and draw and listen to some music. Oh, man. Who are you leaning to? Metallica, Circus Survive, uh, probably some old Outkast. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, some old ass Outkast. Probably some old brother Lynch in there. If I feel like listening to that, oh, that's race shit right there. I'm saying, yeah, I might, I might throw in some JL shit, some JLB hood shit. You know what I'm saying? I might throw in, I might throw in some really cool shit, shit like this. But, but again, it's only ever a track here and there, and, and then, I, then I dip into it a little bit, and then I'm back out of there. Cause I, cause I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, controlled by it. Uh, now I've heard other artists say that they, they feel like uh, if you listen to too much of one person, it can kind of influence your writing. It totally influences your shit subconsciously. But then at the same time, I, and, and again, when I just hear what it's about, I just be like, damn. And 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 and, and it's not really fair to say like it's just a song or whatever. It's not. That's not how songs work. You could tell yourself it's just a song. You could tell yourself it doesn't influence you in a certain way, but that's not how songs or vibrations or yeah. music works. It does influence you. It does have an impact on you. It does. So what's your process in the recording studio? Say somebody uh somebody shoots you a beat and stuff. You get the beat, you vibe into the beat. How do you put the record together? Okay, okay. Um, well, First, first of all, let, let's go on the assumption I like the beat. Because a lot of times, a lot of times I don't, and then that'll make it different. But if I like the beat, then I kind of go with the old Rakim formula: is that I just let the beat keep playing and playing, and I don't even I don't even touch the pen to paper until you Tell know. Speaks to you. I just yeah, I'm like ah, oh, the first thing that I thought of to say might be pretty good, and maybe I'll jot that down. But then if I feel like there's something better, I don't know. I just listen to the Let beat over and over. Now. Are you pen and paper still, or? Obviously, you are. You don't got no. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm pen and paper still, but that's mainly because I draw. Okay. So it's like not only am I when I'm writing, not only am I writing, but it's like a picture. I re, I've realized that like I'm really, I'm really um a stickler about my handwriting and how it fits on the paper. Absolutely. So I've realized, yeah. So I've realized that's a picture in and of itself. Um. So yeah, man. I still, I still write it out. And if I got to start from scratch and it's just an empty canvas and there's nothing on the beat, then I'm going to think about it longer. If somebody sends me some shit that is fire and they verses on there, that shit going to be done. That shit going to be done just like that. Yeah. Nothing, nothing to get me going like the nigga before you going. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. When the nigga before you snap, then you like, oh, not my turn, nigga. Yeah. like, it's my turn. <laughs> I know exactly what it's, I need to do. I know exactly <laughs> where to take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a lot of different processes, too. Uh, I, Usually I used to not go in until I had it up here, but now I don't care about reading it off the paper. I don't know. Now I don't, now I just I just let that go. I used to I used to be so studious and like super MC, you know what I'm saying? I already know my shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna spit it one time. Yeah. And now I don't care. Now now I don't care. I'm just like, uh, what I say? I'm uh, my memory's the worst when it comes to rhymes. Bro, <laughs> and I got into the bad habit of I don't say what's on the paper. Yeah. But okay, so okay, well how's it go? How's it go? I say, uh, I said, sheep will keep slaving for the government and loving it, but we the people who keep suffering because of it. Or, <laughs> you see the eaters who keep slaving toward the government, and we the people who keep suffering because of it. You see what I'm saying? So I end up with all these words where the syllables match the same, yeah. uh, the point is the same, uh, it says the same thing, but it's two different ways I could say it. So then I end up in the studio and I'm and I'm flipping between what's on the paper, but then I got this other way in the back of my head that I said it, and then I end up saying like a mixture of the two. Yeah. And then and then when I listen to the verse back, I'm like, damn, I guess that works. I'd be like, you know what I'm saying? That works. I'll keep all right, I'll keep that. So I don't know, man, I'm all over the place as far as process these days. And that's even when I actually even do the shit. Uh, so, okay, so what kind of a beat do you like? You know what I mean? Like in, in your preference, do you like something a little faster tempo or What's ideal? It's it's whatever. If it's just speaking to you. Yep, yep. It's whatever. Okay. It's whatever. Um, what I've been I've been writing to a lot of like boom bap shit lately, like Griselda like type, that. just loops, just rapping over loops. I was talking with my homie about it, who I may or may not be doing this EP with, who's a local guy who used to be Simon Strange. Um, <laughs> um, and me and him was talking about it. He was like niggas used to say, uh, I was whack for just rapping over loops. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, ah, that, I'm like, man, I got away from it too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The bigger production's cool. I really like a lot of uh, bigger production, especially when you're talking about guys like Seven and shit like that. You know what I mean? Shout out to Michael Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really big production. That's just cool. But, um, but yeah. 
something about taking it back to that basic break beats and I hate and, and I hate to sound grind. cliche old oh, grimy basement, <laughs> but like it's something it's something to that shit. It's something right. to that shit. Taking it back. So okay, so speaking on that, we're coming up on hip hop's fiftieth. August is uh Word. fifty fifty years of hip hop from nineteen twenty Sedgwick in Brooklyn. Shout out um, hip hop. Yeah, shout out hip hop. You've been contributing to hip hop for a long time. They got this hip hop museum coming. You've seen you've been able to tour and see a lot of the country. What uh what's your take on all that? You know what I mean? Like what do you Um I think uh That was kind of a broad question. It's a just... it's a it's a broad question. But I but I have an answer. I like it. Um I think that shit is good for just history period. I think uh good or bad things need to be be documented accurately. Um so that so that it's there for for future generations to 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 delve into. But but also also the older hip hop gets and the more changes it goes through good or bad, I think it kind of validates it as a uh, form of music regardless. I I hate I hate the critique of hip hop like I don't even think that shit's really music. I'm like, bro, how you like how you figure that? Yeah. So 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 long as it's turning fifty, and you got uh, all the all the hip hop museums and shit like that, get documentaries and uh, record breaking album sales and tours by hip hop artists. I think that just cements it and uh, and calcifies that shit as the form of music that haters try to say it's not. I agree wholeheartedly. I remember when I first started vibing in the in the early 90s and 2000 motherfuckers was like it's a flash in the pan it's gonna be coming and gone and and look how much it influences bro. everything from tv commercials like to hip-hop is life yeah. bruh bruh yeah yeah we got i think we got that on lock you know the only other form of music i think keeps it as real as hip-hop is fucking country talk to us you know what i'm saying like yo man Yo, country artists be keeping it real as fuck, but uh, yeah, culture. Uh, as far as illustrating the world and shit, hip hop, we really got that shit down. Oh, yeah. real and, talk. and you know, and it's undeniable. My mommy say the same shit when I started rapping. She said that shit's a waste of time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This shit is a waste of time. <laughs> and you know, we could we could argue that point present day, but still though, still though. Right, so we talking about rap again. I got to get back into it. Um, so obviously, you was partners with. Are still are whatever Ubi, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Y'all cool and shit. Uh, what is uh, what is one of your favorite collaborators in the studio other than him? You know what I'm saying? Who can who, did, <sighs> who was a joy to work with? And you was like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Every time me and this guy get together, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be solid. I think, man. You've had an opportunity to collaborate with a lot of people. You know what I mean? It's kind of a I, list to sort through. I, I I've done a lot of collabs. Um. I even got another follow-up on that. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, I don't have an answer for that one. I, You know, when I'm in the studio, man, it's really, I really just kind of, uh, I guess Yubi's really the only answer to that. Okay. You know what I'm that's saying? Fair. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the yeah, all the fondest mem- memories Absolutely. of being in the studio. And, yeah, when you put it in the context of, like, oh, I love working with this dude because we tear it down. Well, it's that guy. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm such a stickler in the studio. I'm really... I probably missed a lot of moments that just that I'm being in my own box in the studio and worried about what I'm doing so much. I really be having tunnel vision in the studio and I probably I probably could have benefited by not being that way so much. But you know, it's good to it's good to have another guy on the track. You know, you don't gotta worry about him bringing his shit. Yeah, you know I mean, so I can I can afford to. You know, I don't gotta hold his hand at all, so I can afford to just. As a matter of fact, I probably need to focus more on keeping up than then lift the motherfucker up to my level. And that's how you want it for a guy like me. So a perfect follow-up to that would be uh, who's somebody that you get in the booth with or have gotten in the booth with and, and you really go, damn, I got to push my pen on this one. Like, this one really, like, I just heard that verse, you know what I mean? And, like, we're sitting here vibing in the studio yeah, that, together. Yeah, that got to be tech, though. Yeah. Like Word play. Yeah, all the time. All the time. You know, and every time I thought I had this motherfucker, I didn't have You know what I'm saying? Like every time I, every time I'm like, yeah, fuck, you know what I mean? You put my shit down, and then you hear the song when it's done, and you're like, oh man, <laughs> oh man. And, you know, and, and Tech was always really good about it. he ain't feeling that way. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, no, what the fuck? I, 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 I went that hard because you went that hard. Cause you went that hard. I'm like, like, nah, I can fuck all that. Don't lie to me. Yeah, yeah like fuck all that. Yeah. Has anybody ever made you rewrite your shit? 
Now, you know what? I don't, I, I'm not about to rewrite. Here, because here's my thing, right? Like, even when I always said this too, I was always blessed to be around guys who I felt like were outriding me. And when I say that, I mean, like, maybe, maybe, maybe their skill set is better as far as like maybe their metaphors are really, are really out there or the wordplay or, 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 or shit like that. But, but I always knew, motherfucker, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not recording my shit. Unless I know I got some shit too, and that's how I always felt about it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I could always stand on tracks with cats because I know I'm I'm bringing some shit to the table too. Absolutely. Niggas, yeah, that, yeah. niggas ain't sounding like me. I ain't sounding like them. I mean, you gotta from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If I'm if I'm in the booth and I'm saying that shit, trust me, I feel I feel what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. I I'm not worried about with my contribution to the song if I'm spitting it. I'm not in the booth if I don't feel like that shit's up to snuff. Yeah, well. And 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 rather than rewrite that, I don't rewrite. But I tell you this, and you know this, I just won't do anything. <laughs> For real, niggas would be sitting there, and I'd be like, I'd be like, nope, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Leave the studio that day. I didn't lay it down. Wasn't feeling it. Didn't lay it down. Wasn't feeling it. Yeah, I if tell, I, hey, I can already tell you a wild ass boy. Bro, if I'm not, yeah, if I'm if I'm in there recording it, then this is the one. I'm not in there. I'm not in there on the mic if I if I don't, if I can't stand on it. So yeah, respect on that for sure. When did you know that you was ill? Like when? Like when did you? What age? Around what time? You was like, damn, man, like, look, I'm one of them motherfuckers, dog. Oh, uh, this is this is how I remember it happening. In high school, and I was deep in the visual arts and the performing arts and shit. And then, I guess my my freshman year, I really started getting into hip hip hop. My sophomore year, this motherfucking dude who I won't even give the time mm -hmm. a day. I remember, I can't remember what I was rapping. I think it was like some Mac Moss shit or some shit like this or something. And he came up on me, and, and he was ear hustling. To hear what I was spitting, but then at the end of the verse, he started spitting it with me, and then he dapped me up, and then he was like, "Oh man, I thought that was yo shit," and it, you know what I mean. So I went from ah uh, to, and he was like, "Write your own shit," you know what I'm saying? Write your own shit, and uh, and then I did after after sophomore year, and so I came back junior year, and it was already it was already a rap, it was already a rap. I was in the lunchroom just. Just killing ciphers and shit and killing freestyles and shit. So I mean that You've been an animal since a junior in high school. I mean that's that's when I that's when I'd say it happened. That's what I'd say it happened. Oh man, I you know, so uh shout out to that dude. Yeah. Who told who told you it was his idea. Write your own shit. Okay. All right, my own shit. Yeah, you did this. Push me over the top. I know for one thing, man, every time you came to Des Moines, my brother, you came and did some super rapper shit and you wrapped your ass off every time. So Hell yeah. I appreciate that though. Hell yeah, yeah. Skateboarding in the parking lot, puffing and just, just kicking. <laughs> yeah. this dude, Out there with trees, riding rapper. around on a skateboard at Valair, just chilling. It's good times. Oh man, I just recently talked to that dude. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, so uh we'll get down to the last couple of questions here. Um Favorite city to perform? Well, who who was rocking the hardest over? I mean, you do done quite a let's few say, tours. Let's say favorite city and most memorable city. Okay, there we let's go. Do two. Most memorable, probably Tempe, Arizona. Okay. Was that a tour or was that just a? Yeah, that like was a, yeah, that was on tour. Uh, it was in a. Uh, I can't remember the venue, but but what I remember about it that made it memorable was that. Okay, and I say this respectfully. We're used to we you, you know how you know how the strange music fans fan base is white. <laughs> yeah, that yep, that too, <laughs> that too, and, and you know the juggalo culture kind of kind of carried over from that. Yep. So so you For know sure. how they present themselves. But in Tempe, Arizona, this particular year, I think it's in 2016. Um, these motherfuckers were dressed to the to the to the nines. You would have thought they were at prom or something. Oh, damn. And I don't mean just a few people. I mean Everybody, you saw a lot of button down, you know what I mean? Sure, awesome. yeah, wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of t-shirts, wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of dunks and shit. These niggas was was out there like they were celebrating an event. So, um, so yeah, but my favorite place to get down in is uh, you know, just in, just anywhere in Colorado, man. Like I said, you're low key famous out there. Yeah, the love is real. The love is real out there. The love is real out there. Um, you know, and they showed out every time. Every every show down there is sold out every time. So. uh the proof is in the pudding. You know, you know what's funny about that too in Colorado is that they felt like 
they had to compete with Kansas City. And I'm like, bro, Kansas City does not show up for us like this. <laughs> they're like, they're like, what? You know, y'all sell out shout out to Kansas City? I'm like, no, bro. Why is that, do you think? There's that old cliche where they say they don't love you at home until they love you somewhere else. You know what, man? I really can't call it. I I, I have this memory of uh, walking on pros- down Prospect one time, I think it was, and Tech had just put out Angelic. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. And there was a billboard there, but half that motherfucker was burnt. Oh, like somebody had thrown a motherfucking Molotov at her or something. And, I, and you know what I mean? And I remember thinking to myself, well, the shit happens. That, maybe that wasn't intentional. <laughs> there's, a, there's a million ways to explain why that sign is burned, but it just always stuck with me. And I'm like, nah, I feel like that's some hater shit, though. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that was some hater shit. Man. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, me personally, being a fan of tech, Way before strange music existed, way before uh, Travis in the picture, anything like that. Yes, um, I feel like I feel like he's always had that love hate relationship with Kansas City. Maybe maybe I got it wrong. Maybe maybe I got it wrong. But maybe a lot of and I don't. Obviously, I'm an outsider. I don't know. But maybe the disconnect with some people is you know what I'm saying. That old school shit, you know what I'm saying? I think he's a devil worshiper, the spike red hair. There's that too. Face paint. You know, know, and I didn't and I didn't know until touring and getting out and uh meeting people from different areas and shit that I didn't know niggas thought the fast rap shit was corny. A, a lot of niggas would tell a lot of niggas would always tell me who were fans of tech they'd be like man i always thought the fast rap shit was corny they'd be like but i fuck with tech you know what i'm saying but i'm a technician and i'm like really you always thought that shit was corny because you know in kansas city niggas always been chopping Hell like yeah. niggas been chopping since i mean goddamn pioneer desktop nigga um south side posse nigga the incredible zig nigga like i you know what i'm saying Vel Bacardi, nigga you know what i'm saying I, I just remember we always did that here and it was never corny to me so i don't understand niggas in different places move different like that niggas that think it's corny are usually the niggas that can't, can't do, do it, it. <laughs> respect respect they're like oh y'all with that rap that's rapping. real <laughs> shit y'all with that rap that's real, real shit nigga <laughs> Niggas that can't. Nigga, my that. son told me that. He was like, man, I can't do that. I ain't trying to do all that. I was like, nigga, why? Because it's hard to do. He was like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, nigga, because that shit's a little hard to do, yeah, man. But, you know, it's a, it's a nice trick to have in your bag. And and we saw that shit get more. I, I saw that shit get more popular. You know what I'm saying? Like, you take a guy like uh, Marshall Mathers, mm-hmm. who didn't even really have that that skill in his bag until the later years. And I think, and I think that speaks to how, how that, that style, style Became more popular, so, so a nigga like Tech got to eat, got to eat off it on, on, the, on the back end because he already had it down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? While niggas, while, while niggas like Eminem was trying to catch up to that, and that's a new trick for him. Niggas like Tech was already doing that shit. So perfected that style for sure. Oh man, down to down to a T, and, and, and still doing new shit to it. Still doing new shit to it. I always said that's my favorite thing about uh, about Tech that you never knew what he was gonna say. You know what I'm saying? saying? Certain niggas, niggas got they, they you, you know the bag they be in. In Texas, like, you never knew what the fuck. There's no bag. There's no bag, man. You never know what the fuck. Yeah, man. So let's loop that back into favorite city that you like to perform in. You know, uh, I believe there's a house of, house of, what? House of blues in LA? Oh, in LA? Yeah, I mean, and I guess, and I guess that'd be the favorite venue, too, but, um, Red Rocks, though. Yeah, Red, Red, yeah, Red Rocks, Rock's the illest shit, shit man. That's, that's the illest shit ever. That's the biggest. That's the biggest. I'm not, I'm not even sure what city is that. Morrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. outside Denver. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's the illest performance, performance ever, man. Just performing uh, to a sea of people. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I don't know if you know or not, but when that many people are looking at you, you you can feel you can feel it. You can feel it on your body. <laughs> it's not it's not just like a visual thing. When that many people are looking at you, you can feel it, and and uh, you just got to channel that. What's the biggest crowd you think you rocked? Ah, shit, man, I don't know. A couple, I don't know. It had to, it had to been that Red Rock show. Yeah, and I had to get the numbers on that. But like I said, dude, to see a people, I couldn't even. You know, you look, you look, you're on stage and you look back into the people, and before you see the back of the venue, the people just disappear into the darkness, 
Like it's just like a fucking. I mean, when I say a sea of people, I mean a sea of people. It really is, and, and the way that. the venue is shaped, the the, the cascade. It's built for that shit, yeah, yeah, man. It's built for that shit, and man. And the mountains wrap around you. Oh man, you smell the pine in the air, bro. And, it's and the pine in the air, <laughs> bro. You know the green rooms and the, and the green rooms in that motherfucker are all built into the mountain. Yeah, oh, it's, it's the gnarliest venue I ever been to, man. Matter of fact, I actually did that shit twice. Oh, that's so, yeah, that was cool. My very first interview was t- with Tech was Rock the Bells, uh, two thousand and nine. No, was that when uh when he was up there with uh, Busta Rhymes? Oh yeah, 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 hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, dude. And Tech and I were already homies, but then I showed up to do the interview, and he was like, "That motherfucker, Steve." And Damn. it was him, Chris, and Cut back in the green room. That's and dope. That was the that was the first and only time I ever been back there. Um. But yeah, we went back there and politicked with him and kicked it. And hit him, Chris, and Cut gave me the dopest interview. Damn. And uh, I've always credited him with with all you know really taking me to the next level because he showed so much love and everything. So shout out to the big homie Tech, much love on that one. Shout so, out Nina Tech. Hell yeah, um, man. Well, I appreciate you coming through, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, man. This, this was is, dope, bro. It's a little early for me, but yeah. I, could, I could still get I could still get with it. I could still get up and at it. I think we touched down about three AM and was back up and rocking at eight AM. I got a couple of cups of coffee in me just so I'm binging. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying to I'm trying to get up and move, see what that folder smell like. Bro, I get up. I got like a, a pot of coffee in me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck that coffee shit. That's for old niggas. <laughs> Look, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm drinking this shit. That's why I'm drinking this shit. That's me. Yeah, that's what I say. That's me. So, man, uh, are you still working, doing verses? If so, how can people contact you? Where can they find you? Oh, good part. I be in the sunken place. I don't know. Don't I got? I don't. You know what? I don't really know. Instagram at the real Godimus. Oh yeah, at the real Godimus. Um, I be doing verses and stuff. Um, to any to anyone inquiring. It's gonna help a lot if you if you send something with, with like a at the bare minimum a hook on it. Give me a little direction. Uh, yeah, a, a verse would be a little would be a little easier, and then I could write my feature because if you just send me an instrumental, and I start it, then you're featuring on my song. Hello. See what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Just uh, and get at me, get at me. Stay in school. <sighs> Stay in school. That's what's up. I'm gonna be definitely getting at you, my dude. Oh, Hell man. yeah. Appreciate it, dog. Hell yeah. Always love. All right. It's your boy, that motherfucker, Steve. It's Jason Dean. Jason Hasselhoff, if you nasty. Big Ray West, B I double G, representing the west side of Des Moines, not to be confused with the coast, you dig? And we out. We've been known to snatch a piece or two. Yeah. Y'all can't take over, cause we gon' eat the you. Rock steady like a ginger bro to read the through. This shit torture, and I'ma keep feeding you. On that East Coast shit, y'all better duck down. Price on his dome, five on it like yuck mouth. When the plug get knocked, that's when the price jumps. American nightmare, that's where the spice won. Rappers running like Ricky in the alleyway. Putting an end to the week, no Saturday. They want static, get it shaking like. Like cash is clay, passing the thugs, mixing do say with Alize. Don't play with us, them goons ain't got you safe enough. Yellow fuck them like Smokey off the angel dust. My life's so real, sounds like I made it up. Been up so long, I don't remember waking up. Dangerous, sharper than a razor's touch. We hit that strip and get the cake enough. God hate of me, so ain't no saving us. Been up so long, I don't remember waking yeah. up. Big balls don't